with previous books, I've had something earnest and high-minded to say about how I got the idea, you know, my lifelong passion for the Civil War, or great discovery in the archives. Uh, this time it happened while cleaning house. Um, uh, my wife, who's also a writer, uh, and I live in a, a, you know, an 18th century farmhouse in New England where everything sags, and our overflowing books uh, definitely do not help. And we were fighting over shelf space a few years ago. <laughs> in a barn, we were fixing up to accommodate all these books. And she said, you know, it's finally time uh, you ruthlessly cull all those books from college that mm. you've been toting around the globe for all these years, you know, claiming you're going to right. revisit them. So I was forced to kind of <laughs> glumly go through them and throw away four years of liberal arts education. <laughs> Find and the I, ones that spark joy. Right. right. And <laughs> it was sadly easy to toss most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I came to the Cotton Kingdom, this fat old volume that I had forgotten, that I had been assigned in a Southern history class my senior year in college. And I read a few pages. I read a few more and went to my computer and ordered a whole bunch of biographies and histories oh, relevant no. until I'd uh, filled several shelves. <laughs> and um, so I think it was really first the vividness of his writing uh, about the South in that era um, and my curiosity of how he got from there to Central Park and then also his mission of, yes, uh, I'm going to go and um, cross this divide and try and understand what is happening at this country at this moment seemed a very relevant mission for our own time. So I thought parallel journey, uh, 160 years apart, what he saw then, what I see now, and beyond that, I really had very little, uh, really no outline or itinerary.